Hello, uh, it's Thursday the 14th of October and I'm just heading to Cornwall. Not Cornwall, sorry, Devon. Um, I've just been talking with a taxi driver about going to Cornwall. Uh, so I've just got to go and pick up my tickets from the collect ticket collection machine and then I'll be getting on the train to Birmingham and then changing from Birmingham to go to Totnes. Uh, so I'll keep a kind of set of updates. I've got loads of stuff with me, I've got loads of bags um, and um, music to listen to, videos to watch or listen to. I've got my books with me. Uh, yeah, all ready for the journey. Let's go. This is a decentered media vlog with me, Rob Watson conversations about community media. Visit decentered.co.uk or follow on Instagram and Twitter at Decentered Media. Birmingham New Street Station, uh, which is not my favourite station. Um, it always seems to be a pain to get about uh, and travel around this station. Uh, it's, there's so many platforms that, even even though they spent a lot of money refurbishing the station, it, uh, it just isn't easy to access and use. But uh, as long as you're not here too long, then it's not too bad. Yeah, so I've got about a 10 or 15 minute wait and then I'll go down to the platform <coughs> and get the train, the Plymouth bound train, um, which takes about three hours, uh, just over three hours to get to Totnes. So plenty of food with me, plenty to drink. Um, and I'll keep pushing on to the next bit, uh, get my reading done, get some music, listen to, speak to you in a bit.
several needs. Please be mindful of the gap and take care when stepping onto the platform. Also make sure you take all of your personal belongings with you. Hello, um, I just got into Totnes. Uh, this road though is really busy, it's a pain to cross, uh, but the station's just behind me. And uh, th that way uh, is the castle and the town. Uh, so I'm gonna take a stroll into town, find somewhere for a coffee, um, and hopefully meet up with uh, Lucinda or Alice, or then head up to Darsington, 
uh, and take my time. And just uh, actually, it's sunny. I wish I brought my sunglasses and my shorts. I didn't think it was the weather was going to be like this, but uh, yeah, it's nice. Okay, see you later. Hello, good morning. <coughs> um, it's about, what time is it? Oh, it's just nine o'clock, uh, 9 a.m. <coughs> I think it's Friday the, <laughs> I'm losing track of what days things are. It's Friday the 15th of October, and today I've come, travel down yesterday from Leicester to Totnes. Um, and I'm at the Dartington Estate, which is where Sound Art Radio is based. And <coughs> I'm just out for a little stroll. Um, so, kind of catch the uh, the morning. Uh, it's definitely autumn now. Um, it was a lovely evening yesterday uh, because the it was just peaceful and quiet, um, and it was uh, we had we had a pint together, Lucinda and Alice and I. At the I think the pub is called the White Hart on the Dartington uh, Estate, and uh, Dartington Hall is a it's like an education and cultural centre. It's got a long history. It used to house there used to be arts and drama courses uh, run here, and I think they've they've started doing some more art and drama degree type courses again <clears throat> but sound art radio has been based here for uh oh, a long time over 10 years um and i've been visiting on a, a regular basis uh not recently due to the pandemic um but um it's i just find it a really invigorating attitude to media um there's a kind of openness and an ability to explore and experiment which you don't often get with forms of radio in particular which can often be quite formulaic and quite um, systematic uh, whereas this is about finding and helping people to locate um, their creativity and to explore the world in different ways using sound and, and forms of radio as well rather than maybe just um, regurgitating or imitating a standard commercial kind of model so uh, it's based in Totnes um, Totnes is an interest it's a lovely little town uh, it's quite interesting it's quite there's definitely something in the water around here there's lots of uh, arts groups and uh, people interested in um, kind of alternative uh, um, arts and culture there's a, a definitely a a kind of uniqueness to the events that go on so while I'm here I'll try and hopefully I'll get a chance to to wander into Totnes maybe this evening um see if there's anything going on in any of the, the bars I'll go for a pint um and yeah we're here to do an event about community radio and it's and the ability or or, or the way that community radio can work with people involved in community radio can work with researchers from universities from academic institutions in order to be able to facilitate better understanding and engagement with and participation in forms of research and what we're uh, what we're doing is I'm <coughs> playing a part in, in helping to evaluate that uh, but we the event is uh, run by Lucinda and Alice, who runs Stellario Media, uh, has a production company which uh, contributes towards this, and that supports Sound Art Radio. Um, and the idea is to bring people together to learn 
how collaborative um, conversations can be developed between um, community radio produ producers is the wrong word. Uh, uh, I was going to resort to saying people. So people who are making community radio programmes and researchers, academic researchers who are working on environmental projects, cultural projects, uh, it could be data, uh, public things that inform public engagement about research. And we're really fortunate that the project is coordinated via uh, the University of Bath, who've got a very open idea of what public engagement might be, can be. And that public engagement is using forms of participatory uh, involvement with the public, with people, with communities, not just as a kind of a, a distant audience that you feed um, information through the mainstream media, although that's an important part of the communications process, but also to uh, facilitate discussion and facilitate an understanding by the process. So I'm looking forward to, my job here is to capture some conversations about that and to talk with people who are uh, working on the, the public engagement process. Uh, so we've got uh, Dean Veal, who's the public engagement um, manager for, or a, a public engagement manager from University of Bath. Uh, we've also got Kate Baker who runs Agile Rabbit and she's based at uh, Exeter University I think. Uh, <laughs> I'm probably wrong but I'll confirm it. Anyway we're gonna tomorrow <coughs> when we meet up uh, we're gonna have a whole day of chats and conversations and thinking and talking about how we can better use the, the capacity and the inherent um, model of engagement that comes with community media or has the potential, let's say that within community media, to create content that is uh, engaging and that is uh, uh, based on a kind of, if you like, an, an equal relationship and an expectation that uh, the, the public aren't to be spoken down to, but uh, you know, we are to be spoken with when it comes to research. And the idea is, is that reciprocal relationship benefits both, um, both our communities, and the community media people who are creating the content um, and the researchers and the academic institutions as well. So it becomes a space that can be opened up where ideas can be more broadly discussed. Uh, you're doing it in the way that there is a expectation that there are people who are smart out there um, or, or people who are interested and committed who want to discuss these things and that the you know we often think of public engagement as kind of a marketing-led activity if you like which is often tagged on at the end of a project tagged on a, a, a point in a project where you kind of do the work you do the research and then you say okay how are we going to have a conversation with people about this can we get five minutes on the local bbc radio station uh, can we get you know a, a, a news release that gets picked up by one of the local um news newspapers and that's becoming increasingly difficult with the with the kind of intense centralization of our media uh, the other alternative is really just to do things through through platforms like Twitter and and YouTube and Instagram and, and it's a bit of a free-for-all and there's no common ground there. So what this pro what the event tomorrow is gonna focus on is focus on how we can use audio, radio specifically. Um, although I'm gonna try and capture a, a bit of it through video, and how can we can use that in order to um, tell stories, have deliberative conversations, uh, uh, you know, kind of learn from each other, I suppose, is the basic requirement. Um, and let me just find out how to get through the gate. Here we go. So um, I'm walking down to the, the river, 
Let's close that. There we go. So, now what are the, what are those conversations based on? Where where do we get our flow of ideas? And in order to make things accessible, I always resort back to that Raymond Williams idea that you know to make media accessible, we have to deprofessionalize it, and that means. Um, both in terms of the expectations that we have about um, those who are using and want to engage with forms of media, but also those who produce media as well, and those who are um, undertaking uh, work for the public good. So research work, that kind of thing. And I seem to have... Uh There we go. Um, so, you know, it's really a, a, a chance to bring a group of people together and share some ideas. Uh, so let's show you the view I've got. I'll just turn the camera around. I'm not sure if you can hear with uh, the birds. Um, there's a bit of traffic in the distance, but it's it's in the distance. Uh, but otherwise, it's like kind of a the woodland here is quite alive with uh, with with some life, I suppose. Um, yeah, so. I'm looking forward to it. Um, I'll, I'll share some content that I gather and create as I go along. Um, I'm hoping it's going to be a challenging day uh, and that we learn how this process works in practice. So the idea is that we want to share this as a, uh, a maybe a model or an example of good, a good way of developing an engagement approach that incorporates in the use of our media um, and I've, I, I say this all the time now as, as if you've seen these recent videos uh, you might be aware is that um, with climate crisis and the demands and adaptations and changes that we need to make because of climate change and climate crisis um, we as the IPCC the International Panel on Climate Change said we need total and systemic change at all levels of society. And that must include our media. So the way we go about explaining what the climate crisis is and the way that we go about bringing people along to make those changes, those social changes that are going to be necessary, uh, then we kind of have to uh, do this in a way that <coughs> We can't just do it with mouth to mouth, uh, you know, hand to hand engagement. We've got to do this through mediated forms of engagement and practice. And that includes shifting and changing the structure and the nature of how we think about our media so that we are not bound by the same rules, by the same concerns, but we open things up to a, a different set of uh, expectations and reference points and ideas and so that we can challenge the uh, the status quo of that has brought us to the point of potential climate and ecological collapse so for me this is rooted in a a kind of real sense for you can't bring about climate chain you can't sorry deal with climate change and you can't deal with climate crisis if you don't deal with social inequality and have a, a, a model of social justice um, because otherwise people will be resentful and if if solutions aren't shared equitably across society then you won't get consent from people and if people aren't included in the process in order to have their valuable skills, expertise, the potential that people can offer to be part of the solution, uh, then 
you know, we, we won't achieve our aims. And that means giving up control. And that means looking at how we restructure and reconfigure our media so that that more directly relates to the lived experience of different people in different parts of our community so that it doesn't resort just to a narrow band of self-serving uh, people who traditionally get you know the, the spoils and the glory of a media career and make lots of money out of it but that that is spread out into communities who are able to speak and are empowered to speak and have the accountability to one another and to the wider general social uh, public realm as well um, that we can so it's not just this social media free-for-all where people are out for themselves um, doing what they can uh, without any common purpose but that there is a, a legitimate social common purpose there which our media represents and does in many different ways and doesn't try to impose limited narrow solutions onto um, anybody uh, but opens up the space for a diversity of access and gives people the opportunity to uh, make their voices and their point of views heard and there's a two-way process with this one is making sure that people have equitable and um, facilitated access to platforms um, and the media tools of media production but also that people are prepared to learn so the kind of media literacies which I would say aren't media literacies but they're civic literacies they're social literacies it's just that we're putting a camera or a microphone um, in the process and we're sharing it with other people those concerns and those discussions and those points of engagement we're sharing them with other people um, right I think I've chatted enough um, uh, it's a really nice way to start the day uh, I'm going to go and have a wander around the Darsington Gardens uh, we had a late night walk through the gardens in the dark last night Lucinda and I and that was great <laughs> I hardly see where my feet were going and um, we got followed by a cat uh, which followed us for kind of two-thirds of the way around and then it disappeared uh, and the moon uh, it wasn't a full moon but it was really bright and it was a shame really because it was a bit cloudy so you couldn't really see the stars um, but I had a good night's sleep in the accommodation and um, um, I'm looking forward to kind of having some breakfast, making some more coffee uh, and then meeting up with the sound art people uh, later on this morning. So yeah, let's just enjoy the view for a moment. Of course, if you want to get in contact with me, just uh, the website just the website is uh, decentered.co.uk and i'm on twitter and instagram at decentered media there's a herd of bulls i wish i'd caught it i was just a little bit too late but there's a herd of bulls just run across the uh the field of bulled cows Nice fresh morning aroma. How are you, Mr. Cows? Okay, I'm Rob Watson here. I am um, here in Totnes in Devon. And I'm, I'm staying at the Dartington Hall estate I'm in the guest house and I'm just having a morning walk around let's have a look at this sign see if it gives us any indication of there we go 
This is the estate, starting to haul gardens. Oh, somebody's got through. The cow got through, a little one. I wonder if it'll get back. Okay, I'll try and let somebody know. I'm not sure that they want a cow wandering through. Anyway, uh, last night Lucinda and I came for a walk in here in the dark. Uh, the moon was shining just above in front of us. It's like a ship. <coughs> um, and we... I might use that boo as my ringtone. And we had a walk around here and we were followed by a cat uh, which came down from kind of, from over in that direction and kind of wandered down the ridge with us. Um, we got some fantastic colors on the trees. Um, it's autumn and it was quite warm yesterday. The sun was out. Uh, today's very misty, so it's a lovely kind of whether the sun's going to break through again today uh, but it was certainly very uh, I was surprised how warm it was yesterday I felt overdressed uh, and it's really only just getting light kind of eight o'clock and that feeling that actually winter is nearly upon us so you know we're mid-October and it's Friday the 15th of October about 9 a.m. and that feeling that, um, you know, soon it'll be dark at 4pm uh, for a few weeks and we have to adapt to our winter life and we have to think about um, changing the way that we keep ourselves warm, although it's not particularly cold at the moment. Uh, though, um, you know, who knows what our winter's gonna be like this year. So, the train was quite pleasant walking down yesterday. I uh, went through Birmingham. Um, it was uh, from Leicester. I never liked the tra the, 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 the uh, tr section from Leicester to Birmingham, the cross country line isn't uh, isn't great but the uh, the direct route it's the train to Plymouth that comes through to Totnes is always quite nice it's never packed it's always it was busy up to Bristol and then after Bristol it kind of eased off a lot um, and then when we got into Totnes I had a walk around the town for a second and met up with Lucinda and Alice and we had a coffee, talked about the project that we're working on. Oh, it's a bug hotel. Uh, so the bug hotel is designed to facilitate the growth and the diversity of insects. Looks jolly, jolly nice. Um, I wonder how much they charge for, ooh, there goes a squirrel, I wonder how much they charge for uh, fresh towels, sorry that was terrible. Um, also, so Totnes is a really interesting place, There's, <coughs> I did a quick look on YouTube and looked for some walking tour videos. Um, and Totnes comes across as, <coughs> it's, a, it's like a little island of, uh, some might describe it as weirdness, but it's distinctive and independent, um, quite well off in many ways, uh, hotel accommodation and Airbnbs and things like that are quite scarce in the area. So it's, um, it's quite, it can be quite expensive if you're staying here for, you know, on a commercial basis. Um, I was fortunate enough to be able to get a room in the Dartington Hall Hostel, uh, which worked out about, 
I think it's 30 pounds a night, something like that, which I'm, I'm very happy with. Shared showers and bathrooms and kitchenette, uh, but a private room otherwise, and the bed's quite comfortable. Um, I had a good night's sleep. Um, but yeah, Totnes, I've been a couple of times and you know, the flavour of the place is growing on me. I don't, I, you know, when I talk to friends here now, they can tell me all sorts of weird and wonderful stories about growing up and coming from Totnes. I think what you see on the picture postcard frontage is not what the place is actually about. It's, uh, it's a very different place than it appears, appears in the marketing brochures. And there's different currents to life in the town and the neighborhood. Um, so there's a kind of strong sense of independence here. Um, and, you know, it's fascinating to see how that is, uh, is uh, facilitated. So here, if I recall correctly, I don't, I'm not sure whether you'll be able to hear it. It's great to see lots of horse chestnuts on the floor. The conkers will be great from then. But there's a change in that you can hear the, the effect from the, from the concave wall creates a, an echo, a slight resonance. And we're looking out over the gardens. Uh, there's the hall over in the distance. I'll be walking over to the, the back of the hall. I'll be walking over to there in a second. Climb these steps and <coughs> it's very nice in spring and summer. Um, it's, it's a lovely place where you see families um, and uh, maybe a lot more retired people. Well, let's just have a chat with this woman. What, there's a small cow. The cows came over in the corner at the gate in the corner and a small uh, calf managed to hop over the, the one is a small calf just at the gate uh, on the exit there so all right <laughs> This is a very steep kind of series of embankments that run into like steps that run into the gardens. We've sat here and played with walkie talkie radios and on a day that we ran a few years ago for kids and we were doing uh, remote signaling, so signs, um, which was really good fun. Um, it's nice, there's nobody here. This is sweet chestnut. I don't know the difference between sweet and horse chestnut. I wonder which one has better conkers. And so we were walking along here in the dark last night and it was, I've got my boots on, but it was... <laughs> It was a bit, I'm, I'm out of practice, I'm a city dweller. Everywhere you go in the city there's a light. And we were lit by the moonlight, uh, which was sufficient. And as quite rightly as Lucinda pointed out, if we'd have used torches, we'd maybe have found it harder to get around because uh, your eyes adjust to the, the light in different ways. Um, but yeah, it's really nice, really nice fun. And just up here is, fountain which we went past last night i'll try and get around to it i think i can go i don't want to walk over the beds so. and there's lots of these kind of little seating areas there are <sighs> like a walled garden which I'll, I'll walk along that way um I can show you the house and the hall in a moment. Here we go, let's go have a look at the fountain.
cows are still mooing. You can hear them from here. I wonder if that lady's managed to get get the calf back over. Um, I don't know how I'd do that. I wasn't wasn't something I, I felt competent to try and do. And there was an owl, uh, or a couple of owls last night, um, which was really nice to hear. Just as we were sitting outside having a drink and as it went dark, you just got these twit to oos in the background. You've got lots of squirrels along here as well, gathering their nuts for the winter. Where's he gonna go, Mr. Squirrel? So there's the steps that I've just walked from, up on that ridge. And now heading through to the side entrance. Try and come out maybe tomorrow uh, or Sunday morning and just bring my audio recorder, my field recorder, and just um, see if I can just capture the sounds, uh, do a separate recording for that. Right, let's go up this way. <coughs> There's a terrace for the pub, uh, which is just on the other side of this garden. Let's have a look at the, I don't know if you can see the house from this, this angle. Um, probably a bit too distant. Um, I'm not sure what the original history of uh, Darlington is, but I know that in the early 20th century it was it was bought by a philanthropist I believe although no me I'm probably wrong do you have a look at the pagoda with its thatched roof you can imagine students in the 1930s sitting having poetry and drama recitals and performances here. Um, the tutors sat in their linen suits with their gin and tonics. Later on, I'll capture, I'll go out and look, we'll look at the hall in a bit more detail. Uh, this is where the other side of the studios, it's called, which is where Sound Art is based. I think there are people in there having classes today, having coffee. Um, maybe come back out here later on. Yeah, I'll show you the, uh, I'll do a bit more of a, a walk around the hall, maybe this evening, because it looks very nice when it's lit up. Okay, it's probably just in the distance here. I'm not going to zoom in or go closer at this point. Um, I'll leave that for part two. Uh, I need some coffee. I need to make some breakfast. I haven't brushed my teeth yet. Um, and uh, check my emails. Um, so, okay. So uh, yeah, um, that's uh, Darsington, um, quite pleasant. Um, I'm not sure I know all the nooks and crannies or I'm giving you good information, but it was, nice. <laughs> it was good to start off with the cows. Uh, oh, I feel calmer, I feel more relaxed. Uh, I think I'll, uh, 
I'll go make myself some coffee now and, um, and get ready to have a busy day doing some work and thinking about uh, community radio stuff. So, okay, so have a lovely, a lovely day. I'll speak to you later. You've been watching a Decentered Media vlog with me, Rob Watson. To find out more, go to decentered.co.uk or follow on Twitter and Instagram at Decentered Media.